So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As you've heard before, my name is Thane Niemand. I own a little business in a little town called East London. I want to just share with you today how easy financial management is. It is not, ladies and gentlemen, about being an accountant. It's not about being a bookkeeper. It's about common sense. So if I buy a product for 200 bucks, 200 rand, and I sell it for 300 rand, how much do I put in my pocket? 100 rand. Okay. If I've got 90 rands worth of expenses, and I'm left with 10 bucks, that is called net profit. So you can do that. If I got the 100 rand, it's called gross profit. So what's so difficult about that? So when you're selling something, you work out your gross profit, which is the 300 rand that you sell it for, minus the 200 rand that you've paid for it, you've got 100 rand gross profit. Just by the way, those of you who are selling time, your gross profit is always 100%. It is, because you normally don't have a cost of sales. How do you work out a percentage? Well, it's very simple. You take the 100 and you divide it by 300 and you're going to get 33.3%. Am I right? So all we've done so far to work out our gross profit, our net profit, and our gross profit percentage is adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. And that's how easy financial management is. But you've got to know where to look for the numbers. All right, so what am I saying, ladies and gentlemen? You don't need to be an accountant to be a financial manager. What you do need, though, are bookkeepers. Because I know you and I do not like dealing with numbers. And if we don't like dealing with numbers to improve the success of your business, you need to know what the numbers are telling you. You might not need to know how to do the numbers, but you need to know what the numbers are telling you. And that is where our bookkeepers and our accountants come into play. Some of them, if you ask them, will be able to do the financial management for you, but that is a specific task you have to ask them to do. Where are the bookkeepers? How much do you charge per hour? Sorry? How much do you charge per hour? 200 rand an hour. Okay? Somebody said that's cheap. 215. Oh. For 200 rand an hour, you get somebody into your business for a week, sorry, I beg your pardon, once a week for an hour or two, or once a month. If you're registered for VAT, very often it's every second month. But get the numbers, ladies and gentlemen, and today you'll be able to identify what those numbers are telling you. So what is it about? Well, the first thing about financial management is budget strategy. You need to have a budget. Have you heard about that before? We started our business out. Before we spent one cent, we turned it over, or one rand, we don't want to spend money, and do we really have to spend this money? And we had an income and an expenditure thing, and we checked it on a regular basis, but after a couple of months, it, ah, this is easy, and you don't do it anymore. And then you start taking Kentucky to work instead of your husband or your wife making Sami. Okay? So you need a budget strategy, and that budget strategy has got to look after your capital expenditure. And the way I would like you to do this at home is to do a one-year budget, a three-year budget, and a five-year budget. And in your capital expenditure budget, you put the numbers down of the equipment that you think you're going to need this year, three years' time, five years' time. You need to do your operating expenditure, how much you're going to pay on rent, water and lights, telephones, salaries, Again, project them over three years. Terry asked me to mention the business plan. Ladies and gentlemen, a business plan is very, very important. Okay, it's your referral back. And I know we generally put business plans together when we need money. Most of us have got business plans sitting in our heads. So when we are forced to put that in writing is when we want to go look for money. So what happens is we go to the bank with our business plan, and we're not successful. 40% are successful, I heard today. What do we do with the business plan? Throw it in the bottom drawer. Not so. When we are successful, and we get the money, what do we do with the business plan? 
chuck it in the drawer. Okay. You need to go back to that business plan. But please, ladies and gentlemen, when you do your business plan, let it be realistic. Be realistic about your, your budget strategies, your capital and your operating expenditure. Be realistic about your pricing. And we'll speak a little bit about price, pricing later on, how important it is to have the correct price and that you're actually making money. Why are we talking about that? On your front page, can I ask you to write the following words? Anywhere. In fact, if, you want to, if you're part of Mark's generation, you can tweet yourself or, or Facebook yourself and say, I'm in the business of, and then write down your business. Those of you that have been here before, you're not allowed to answer. I'm in the business of printing. Write that down for me, please. I'm in the business of photography hire. I'm in the business of construction. And then what I'd like you to do, once you've written that down, Put a little insert, you know that little pointer, and write in the following three words, and it's not I love you. <laughs> making money from. You are in the business of making money from photography hire, from construction, from printing, because we are so passionate about what we do, we actually forget the reason why we're actually in the business. It's actually to make some money. And that's where your pricing is very important. I get often asked, what do I need to keep? When I start my business, what kind of slips do I need to keep? What pieces of paper do I need to keep? You need an administration strategy. And the lady that's just starting bookkeeping, this is going to happen to you. You're going to have a client come up the stairs. Two plastic packets. Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay. And the one packet's going to have all the invoices. And other pack is going to have all the expenses. And then it's up to you to actually sort these out into month and year and tax year. Am I right? Please, that is at least a system. What you need to do is take those pieces of paper and file them. I don't care if you have two files, a red file for money going out and a green file for the money coming in, but have two files. You know, we went to a business the other day and I said to the guy, where's your file? Where's your paperwork? He said, Yes, I'm down here. <laughs> and you hold out papers at the bottom drawer. And then he said, have a look here. And there's another drawer. And says, Mavis, bring those papers from the back office. I said, is that all? He says, no, I've got to go to the cubby hole of my car. <laughs> okay. That is not administration, ladies and gentlemen. And without an admin system, you are not going to be able to know when your business is making money or not making money. If you want to err, uh, rather put the piece of paper in that you've spent then leave it out. So in other words, if you've gone and spent money at Edgar's or Truers or Fushini's on clothes, and you don't know, do I put this in the packet of expenses or don't I? I tell my clients, put it in. I'll tell you why. Because it may be tax deductible. Because if I go and buy Mike Said a new tie, it's a gift for the client. So I can claim a tax deduction for it. But if I go buy myself a tie, it's, an, it's not a tax deduction. And I know there are people out there that do that. No one in this room, I know that. <laughs> and no one watching the TV, I know that. But there are people that will do that. But for example, maybe I go and buy a nice shirt at one of the retail stores, and then I brand it with my name. And that's tax deductible. Now, you might not know that because you're not a tax person. So apologies to all the bookkeepers out there, but rather put more slips into your expenses and let them sort it out in discussion with you, then keep them out. Okay. So you need an administration strategy. And as Derek said, it's very difficult to assess your business if your personal and your business expenditure is all combined. Okay. So if you know that your school fees are not tax deductible, don't put the claim through. Because otherwise, I'm not going to be able to do these strategies and work out whether your business is making money or not. Okay. Sales strategy for me as a technical person is more about targets. So I know that if I need 20,000 rand a month to survive and I work 20 days, how much do I need to make a day? 1,000 rand. If my hourly rate 
which I hope, is a thousand rand an hour, I know that I've got to see one client for an hour every day in order to make my 20,000 rand. Does that make sense? Doesn't make sense. Okay? But I also know that for every two people I see, I only do one sale. Therefore, I know that I've got to see 20 people. 40 people. See, you guys awake? Okay? If I know then that every fourth person that our phone gives me an appointment, then you've got to times it by 460. So that's to me a sales strategy. And if you don't know how much money you need to make in a month, then you're like all over the place. You need to have a focused strategy, and that is why that business plan is so important. If you should have done it when you started your business, the business plan, the marketing plan, that was the best time to do it. The second best time to do it is now. I love that. So if you don't have a strategy, don't have this in place, the second best time to do it is today.